Part 2 To your left, the needle-like pins of an Iron Maiden that sits just in the corner of the room look like they may be within reach. Using your feet, you slowly move the pair closer, pausing with each cautious moment, each motion. You continue to watch to see if the guard twitches in his sleep. The metallic clinking of the pins as they roll across the dusty stone floor. Keep your mind's eye alert. Inch by inch, you continue to pull them closer until finally they seem to be within range. Backing as close to the wall as your body will allow, you create as much slack as you can in your arms or strengths. Using that extra length, you make quick work of the locks on your ankles. Picking, prodding, eventually, they come off. You leave them wrapped to maintain the illusion of entrapment before starting on your wrists. Now though, you're only working one-handed. Things are going to be a little bit more difficult. On your first try, one of the picks drops, causing the guard to jostle in his sleep. Oh, mm. Gingerly, you reach to pick it up to try your luck again. This time you can feel the pin loosening the lock before it slips, cutting your finger. A rather loud clinking echoing off the walls of this stone room. Again, the guard groans. Oh. Only this time, he rolls, his face now towards you. His eyes, however, are still closed, so he's not looking in your direction. Again, you come to another decision. Do you try again? Or do you attempt to wake the soldier in hopes your newfound weapon will end him? If you choose to pick the lock one more time, skip to part five. If you choose to wake the guard and possibly get the keys, skip to part six.